right, we better get back. I the can. Mmm, smell that coffee. You go on and tell the mother we're back. I'll bring the catch as soon as I clean it. Hi, dear. Oh, hi. Jack said you did all right. Well, they ought to make enough for supper. Uh, how did you and uh, Betty do? Oh, we came in early so that we could get some packing done and get an early start in the morning. Don't remind me going home. Can't we squeeze in one more day? Oh, I'm afraid not, son. I have to be back to work on Monday. Mm-hmm. And you and Betty have to get ready to go back to school. School already. Gee, seems like the summer just started. You know, Dad, this camping out's been more fun than any vacation I've ever had. That's fine. It surely has. I hope we can do this again next summer. Uh, can we? Oh, Betty, that depends. Maybe your mother would rather do something else next summer. Oh, no. I've enjoyed this as much as anybody. There's something so relaxing about being out like this. Well, let's finish relaxing and touch it all off with a marshmallow. What do you say, Mom? You hold okay, these and I'll see if I can get the fire going. Boy, just look at those stars. You almost feel as if you could touch them. Do you suppose we ever will? Will what? Oh, reach the planet, the moon, space travel. Mm, no doubt about it. Oh, maybe it'd be a long time before we reach the planets. They're pretty far away. But a space station first, and from there, on out to the moon. That's on the way, and, and maybe quicker than we think. Why, Dad, you're the last person on Earth I'd expect to believe that. Well, yeah. Why, Betty, your father's not entirely lacking in imagination. That's what I mean. Imagination, science fiction stuff. Dad's always been one for the facts. Well, I know one thing. If they do build a space station in my lifetime, or send a ship to the moon, I'm gonna be ready to go. I'm gonna have my name on the waiting list. Are you? Gonna go? Sure. No, no. I mean, are, are you going to be ready? I don't see why not. It's gonna take someone with a spirit of adventure. I still say, are you going to be ready? I don't know what you're getting at. The facts as Betty says. The fact is, adventure will be just one little part of it. Right now, you and Betty will have to get ready for the other things it'll take. Like what? Like what you know, what you understand. What courses are you taking next year? Oh, my schedule's already made out. In the ninth grade, you have to take mathematics and English and history. No science? Well, I had my choice of taking general science this year and next. But I put it off a year. Then you put your trip off a year. How come? <laughs> What's the matter with you, Betty? <laughs> I was just trying to imagine the look on Mr. Bristow's face if he thought somebody had enrolled in general science just to get ready to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting a little off the beam, aren't we? But only because we were talking about the moon. <sighs> I could give you some down to worth reasons why I'd study science if, if I were the age of you two. Uh-oh. Here it comes. The facts. Go on, Dad. You were saying? <laughs> well, my father pretty much grew up with the automobile. And I did the same thing with the airplane. And you two kids, well, I guess you're a part of the atomic age. Yeah, or the television age. That's what I'm getting at. If you want to be an important part of your own age, you have to be able to keep up with it. Or, if you can, keep ahead of it. There's no doubt what we need trained scientists. Well, I've had my year of general science, and I see no reason why I should take another course next year when I'm a senior. I don't want to be a scientist. Oh, uh, she just wants to hook some guy. All right, so I want to get married and have a family. Is there anything wrong with that? 
nothing, except your idea that you'll never need science to keep house. Sure. And who has the big share in keeping us healthy? Your mother. Planning nutritious meals for us, taking care of you when, when you were babies. Suppose you don't find the right man right away. Many worthwhile careers for women. Physical therapy, nursing, medical and dental laboratory technicians. You have to have some knowledge of science in order to get one of those jobs. Here's something else. When you and Jack were little and wanted to know what made it rain? What made the telephone work? Whom did you ask? Not Dad. He was at work. What I didn't learn about science in school, I had to dig out of the encyclopedia later to satisfy you. So you see, women need to know as much about science as some men do. There you said something, Mom. But what about me? I'm no Edison or Einstein. Maybe not. Maybe you won't be another Edison, but, but how do you know you won't? <laughs> Edison may not have been a scientist when he was your age either. But the sciences, chemistry, biology, and physics all give you a chance to discover while you're still in school where your interests are. Maybe so, but won't there still be some jobs where you can get by without science? What if I turned out to be a big league pitcher or a concert violin? <laughs> That'll be the day. Whatever you work at, son, you're still a citizen with the power to vote. Living in a scientific age, we need citizens who know enough about science to make intelligent decisions about what they do. We've used science to, to prolong life, to increase security and happiness. But it can also be used for destruction. Are we going to use it constructively to promote peace and, and give the world freedom from want? It'll be up to you, and you too. Yeah, I see what you mean. It gives a fellow a lot to think about. <laughs> Me too. Five o'clock's going to come awfully early. Five o'clock? Yeah, if we don't get started by then, we won't get home tomorrow night till after dark. I think we better all turn in. Aren't you two coming? I'll be there in a minute. Me too. Yes, Jack? The vacation will soon be over, and you'll be going back to school. You and Betty and thousands of other young people will get down to work in the business of preparing yourselves for the life ahead. And what good prospects the life ahead holds. You will live in finer homes than your forefathers ever dreamed of. You will travel in safety at speeds that would have staggered your grandfather's imagination. You will get to know the people of your world firsthand. Two weeks in Paris. Overnight to Venice. These may be commonplace to you. As the science of agriculture advances, the world will be better fed and clothed and housed. You too will reap great harvests. And you will know the benefits of the many industries pioneered by science. But along with the blessings of a scientific age, you will shoulder new and great responsibilities. You will have to learn all you can about today's technology so that you can do your share of the world's work. So that you can encourage research. So that you can heal the sick. So that you can build the bridges and buildings and highways of tomorrow so that you can teach, inspire, and encourage those who come after you. The fields of agriculture, of electrical and chemical engineering, astronomy, pharmacy, radiology, nursing, dietetics, all these and more require a basic knowledge of science. Some of you may be statesmen who must understand the impact and implications of science on society. You may well decide whether mankind is bettered or destroyed by the products of science. You will be ministers and social workers and psychiatrists who, 
through your comprehension of the adjustments men must make in a scientific age, can help us to grow spiritually and socially as we grow materially. But apart from future benefits, you will find the various fields of science are absorbing studies right here and right now while you're in school. Science is fun. It helps you to learn, to know, and to appreciate. When you study science, you may go on field trips. You discover the marvelous interrelationships between all living things. You learn to read the history of the Earth as it is written in rocks and fossils. You find out what makes things tick. Everything from a molecule to a living organism. In the study of science is found the most useful and satisfying knowledge of man. Knowledge of his physical world, its past, its present, and its future. And in your moments of relaxation, now and in the years to come, you will find the study of science leading you into fascinating pursuits. Photography, collecting. Why study science? Study science because you and Betty and the Nancys and Bills and Joes and Janes all over the country will find in the study of science a richer, more rewarding life.